Why is davening is such an important principle in Judaism, in life in general? Why people disrespect that important principle? Once in a while, one out of a thousand religious Jews are putting all their hearts and attention into the davening, never speak, come in a proper clothing, you know, they never daven without a hat, whatever, they make themselves some standards that this is davening for me, I really feel I'm speaking, I have a meeting one-on-one -on -one with the king of the world. How many people really feel it? Here and there you find all these tzaddikim, like the one we're talking about in Vishnitz, jumping, screaming, crying, broken heart, running around. You feel it. You can feel you, This is Vekuti. If this is not Vekuti in Akanosh Baruch Hu, there's no Vekuti here in this generation. This is it. Why are we not like this? Why one out of a thousand, one out of a hundred thousand is like this? Why it's so cheap, not valuable in the hands of the people? Learning Torah, many people know how wow, it's important. Torah, limut Torah, keneged kulam. People who even don't like to learn Torah force themselves to have a chevruta. It's very important. They make all kinds of rules. You know, I shut my phone. I'm learning now. Don't call me. Say the secretaries, listen, until 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I don't, I'm not alive for you. I'm in a different planet. We see there are people who are respecting the learning. But davening, eh, not so much. The answer is... It's come from Choser Emuna. Person has problem in his Emuna. And that reflects on the davening. W let's clarify what I'm saying. When the Emuna is strong and stable, a person feels incredible pleasure speaking to Hashem. There is really sweetness that it cannot be described with words, like mamash feeling like you're already in heaven. And what are you doing? Standing in front of a wall and talking. But your dvekut in these moments to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is so strong that your neshama have wonderful pleasure. Now you're all looking at me, what is he talking about? I don't, I don't understand what pleasure is talking about. I gotta rush back to business. Customer is waiting. I got to finish with the Shemona Esrek. What to Galal Kadash, Merabah, before you realize, oh, Alenu Leshabeach. You know why we have Alenu Leshabeach in Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah in the middle of the davening, no? Yeah, why? All year, Alenu Leshabeach came to Akash Baruch said, it's not fair, you stuck me in the end of the davening, nobody care about me. Everyone already rushed to the bus, to the, in a parking, he's already sitting in a car driving and saying Alenu Leshabeach. Like I'm neglected, Hashem, so don't worry, I'll make it up to you. I put you in the most two, most important davening of the year, in the middle. Yom Adin, Yom Slicha Omechila, right there in the middle. To make it up, that nobody respect Alenu Leshabeach. Who, who made Alenu Leshabeach? Yoshua Benun. It starts with Ayin, finish with Dalet, first paragraph. Second one, Ayin and Dalet, Ed Ve'ed, Shne Edim to testify that everything we say from the beginning to now, it's the truth. That's why he stuck it in the end. There's reason. Alen l'shabach in the end. So anyway, so he says like this. If a person has deep and strong emuna, then the actual speaking creates wonderful dvekus between him and Hashem, and there's no screens who separate between him and Hashem. That's why it's fantastic pleasure. That's why you see Rav Kook from Tiberias, that he stand three hours with, and you see that he's not in this world. You come, you shoot a gun to his ear, he, he, he's not here. Same thing of Moshe Malka, he used to be connected with the Baba Sali. You see, when he prayed, this person is like in a different world. You see, like the one where you gave an example, most people, one, two, three, finish and goodbye, right? So, someone that is a Muna, is Shitrit, is not deep, and he's very deep in a materialistic lifestyle, he's very connected to materialism, then the sweetness of the davening does not exist in his life. The power and the sweetness of davening, he will never feel it. So what's the obstacle? The love to my new watch makes me not enjoy speaking to Hashem. The love to my new car or to the new beautiful shirts. What kind of, you know how the kids today in yeshiva is learning in the best yeshiva in America. A new kid came to, to, to yeshiva. He comes in, he twists. in my own eyes I saw it. He turned his tie, what kind of this? Ah. 
בן תוירה? He worry what kind of stupid designer from Italy or from Paris, this kind of guy or this kind of guy made that tie. Somebody like this, you expect him to have sweetness in speaking to Hashem? Where do you, where these dreams come from, these illusions? That's already showed the spiritual level of this person, even if all day sits and read Gemara. He's here, but he's not, his heart is not here. A person is not where his legs are. A person is where his mind is. You can be right here and, 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 and your neshama is in, in a kotel now. In a, or in yeshiva. You can do work and your mind is over there. You can be inside the, the yeshiva and your mind is in Sdom v'Amora. Depends where your mind is. A person can be laying there in some park, relaxing, listening to the birds, right? And then you put headphones on his head and you make him hear all kinds of uh, war, machine guns, helicopters, bombs, people screaming. Oh, I just got a bullet to my heart. And he gets excited and he gets a heart attack and he dies. And then the doctor writes in his uh, autopsy the cause of death, getting tanned in a park. <laughs> so, I never heard of someone laying in a park and relaxing and he dies. His body was in a park. But his mind was in Vietnam or in Lebanon. It could be the other way around. Okay, now let's move on. Why 